today I suppose I'm going to show you how to rebuild the forks on your 450. This set here is a two, off of a 2009 and all I'm doing is replacing the fork seals. The guy who is having me do this only bought a fork seal kit. Uh, I usually like to replace the wipers at the same time but this is what he wants so we'll give him what he wants. Uh, right before you start tearing these off of your bike, before you take off your front wheel, if you break the bottom guy loose, get him loose, it'll save you some frustration in the end. And then loosen up your top triple tree, the two bolts there, and break this guy loose with your fork cap wrench. Makes it a lot easier on you. Now, just to get right down to the point, I have already drained the fork oil, I've already broken all of them loose, they're completely separated from each other. This is a twin chamber fork, so you will be taking it apart here at the bottom. So let me get you all set up so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll be right back. Alright, so fork's upside down, there's your rebound valve right there. There is a special tool you can get that will hold everything in place. Racetech makes one. I really recommend you get that, but a crescent wrench works just the same way. You're just going to put it underneath what you're uh, breaking this valve off of. You're going to need a 15 millimeter and of course the 17 used to break this loose. And it's not going to be too tight. Well, it, it shouldn't be too tight. It shouldn't be tight at all. And remember to get... Uh, it counts on your clicks for your rebounding and your compression before you do this because it will change. And you'll have to go all the way back to bottom and start all over again. Rebound valve off. Damper rod. I'm going to take him out now, and then compress, get your crescent wrench back or your race tech special tool, You're setting everything off to the side, be very careful with the damper rod, don't just be throwing it around. Alright, now I'm going to take you back up top and we're going to finish this. All right. Rebound off, we're back up here. Now we're going to disassemble everything, but I need to turn you this way because most of it's gonna be off yonder over here. So, I've already, I screwed it on just a little bit when I set it down, but this will be your actual inner chamber. And then you're just gonna wipe him down, check his bushings, which these ones are brand new this is probably why you only wanted me to just replace the fork seals and then this is going to be messy is the spring so i'm going to go over to a drain pan real quick and get the spring out that way all the excess oil spills into the drain pan and not all over my toolbox You're down. And now, let me wipe off my hands before I reset you. <clears throat> now, we're actually going to be replacing the, or pulling the fork seals out and cleaning off the dust wipers since he doesn't want to replace his dust wipers. So, what happens when you're cheap? You're just going to have an early suspension failure. Oh, these don't even really sit in there that tight. Maybe you should think about replacing those. I have to remind him. And inside here, after you pry him away, make sure you don't damage this inner fork tube at all. That's bad. Very, very bad. But there's a little snap ring that's got four little grooves in it. And this one's been in here for a while. So it's going to be stuck all the way around. It's even a little rusty. You should probably replace those too. But... Right there, got him off. They'll have an open on it, just squeeze style. Try not to block the video here. And now after that, <clears throat> you get to... Uh, oh, nasty mess. Separate them. And 
Again, you'll wipe down the inside of this. I'm just setting this off to the side for now. Make sure focusing on this. Now, we'll just take this bushing off. Bushing. This is a outdoor bushing. Your retainer. This one has a lip. It was facing up. <clears throat> I'm just going to assume that was correct. That feels more right. That feels more right. I think this was upside down. Pretty sure it was upside down. I'm going to check a parts diagram before we go back together. And get this old fork seal off. Really, I could just leave the dust wiper and the snap ring on since he's only replacing his fork seals but I want to clean them off it's probably a bad idea I mean that fell right off that needs to be replaced that's why his fork seals don't last very long but there you go I'm gonna wipe everything down real quick and I'll be right back I got everything wiped down got the new fork seals ready but you're gonna need like a piece of plastic or something like little plastic wrap uh, they have fork seal bullets that go over them that you could purchase too but I just use the wrapper that the fork seals come in this one didn't have a wrapper for it this is a different wrapper but it's going to fit and work perfectly so a little lubrication for installation just right here right there and some right there Put him on. It's got a double lip seal, and I don't, they're already pretty damaged, so I don't want to damage them anymore. Come on. A little, little help with rotation, and then ta da. Dust wiper on, retainer ring is next, or clip, whatever. Old fork seal, garbage. New fork seal, gonna oil this guy up. Just to help with installation. Now, rule of thumb with fork seals, numbers, words, anything will be facing away from the oil. So this would be your oil side, this is your non-oil side. Your dry side. I'm somewhat set up. Come on. Oh, that's tight. Uh, I hope you got the right fork seals. You did. That's just going to be a pain getting over this lip. Uh, uh, wrapper might have one more turn left in it that's good that's all I need and then I did check the parts diagram and it also shows uh, uh, the recess side with the inner lip going towards the fork seal I don't know why but I mean it doesn't I don't know I don't know why and then your outer bushing your inner bushing ta-da now Put them together and we're just going to go to where the fork still seals start to set in and then I'm going to have to change camera angle so you can see what I'm doing with the fork seal driver and yes the fork seal driver is necessary if you use anything else you're gonna probably tear your fork seal and I told you so when you do it for this one it's a 48 millimeter I'll have all this in the description. I usually say that at the beginning of all my videos that everything will be down in the description for you. I forgot. All right. I did not move the camera. Eyes up here. Thank you. Cha -cha. Motion Pro makes a great tool for this. I love Motion Pro's product. I'll always use it and Racetex tools, but you're just 
it sound solid? Must be solid, check. So long as it's underneath that little lip where the retainer ring is gonna sit, you're gonna be okay. One more, just for good measure. Fork seal driver off to the side, $50 well spent. And now I'm gonna lay it back down and finish putting the spur clip and the dust wiper seal in place. Eyes down here, chap. All right, that might be too far, let's go. Mm, yeah, it's kind of English, but I, yeah. There, there you go, kind of. But all I do is take the open end, put it in last, <clears throat> just set the back end in, just set the back end in, once my gloves too, and then take your flathead screwdriver and assist with the rest of installation. You'll hear the clicks. Ta -da. Usually two clicks, you're good, but double check all the time anyways. It's all seated. Move the wiper into place, and he just fell right in, which is not good at all. It should take some force from your fingers to put in. All right, so we're at that. We've got everything back together. So we'll put the wipe down spring back in. Make sure he goes all the way to the bottom. And now our inner cartridge. Oh, I got some dirt on him right there. All right. And now your inner cartridge. And then I'm just going to slide this all the way up screw the cap on just a few threads all right and now we got to go back downstairs because we got to put this guy back on and this guy back in so all right yeah I'll be back press get your stopper on damper rod and just I just keep there's hair everywhere in this garage. Don't tell me to shave or cut my hair because I'm not gonna. And then, the rebound valve. It's as far as he's gonna go before I have to assist him on. I'm just going to use a wrench for right now. And just snug. Just snug. Don't go don't go tight, okay? All right. Get our stopper out. <clears throat> Stand back up, and then we're going to screw this all the way down. Screw him all the way down. All the way down. He's got a long ways to go. Just snuggies, and you'll finish it on the bike. Just a little bit more of a snug. <coughs> and the four core and you can play between 330 and 380 cc's so I'm just gonna use a uh, standard and do 350 just slide this guy down that's okay it's so you can watch me pour the oil in for some reason I can need to see that people. I'm really sorry about all my alarms this morning. Did yeah, they don't... bother you? No, not as much as you interrupting this video. <laughs> I 
Oh, I'm leaving that in the video. I am. <laughs> there you go. You have rebuilt your forks. Good job. See how easy that was? And you were thinking that you'd have to take it to a shop, but nah. You just gotta spend like a hundred dollars in tools. <laughs> and then every time it's uh, just the cost of oil and seals. There you go. Congratulations. Good job. We'll catch you on the next one.